It's funny. I do this whole diatribe about how this upcoming election represents the final exam of American skepticism. Right. About how we're the best defense against the weaponized misinformation that shaded our last election and promised us to dominate this one. I painted it as the gravest threat that skepticism had ever faced. And then along comes COVID-19 and it says, hold my Corona. And yes, a lot of the misinformation has been comically stupid. Right. We talked on this show already about the nincompoop who told people you could cure it by shoving a hair dryer up your nose. And plenty of people who made the objectively stupider claim that you can cure it with prayer. But not all the wrong is that egregious. Hell, plenty of it has been plausible enough to fool even our major media outlets. Take the uh, ibuprofen thing as a perfect example. You know, you might have seen some articles shared around about a couple of weeks ago about how people who suspect they have COVID-19 shouldn't take ibuprofen. And you might have seen some articles shared a few days after that that said that those first articles were wrong and you can safely ignore them. And you might have seen some articles a few days later about how the correction might have been too hasty and maybe you shouldn't take the ibuprofen. After all, hell, you might even have been one of the people who shared those articles. So here's what happened as near as I can piece it together. It all started when some researchers in Switzerland and Greece published a letter in The Lancet. Uh, notice I say letter, not study. This was basically a medical op-ed. It wasn't peer-reviewed. And basically, the letter pointed to a possible susceptibility to COVID-19 and people who are on a certain class of drugs that have certain similarities to ibuprofen. Now, I'm oversimplifying the fuck out of this, not just for brevity, but also because I don't fucking understand it. But basically, it was a non-peer-reviewed speculative letter about a possible correlation, about a causation that may or may not exist based on their anecdotal observation. So based on nothing but that letter, the French Ministry of Health circulates a warning against using ibuprofen if you think you've got the Rona. Now, that led to a French doctor tweeting out a warning, which led to major media in the U.S., the U.K., Israel, Singapore and New Zealand reporting on this thing as well. And this was, of course, exacerbated by the exponential echo of social media. You know, well-meaning people all over the world heard about this, then immediately snatched up their phones to share this vital information with all their online friends. But the information was flawed. They were amplifying a message that shouldn't have been amplified. And this warning no doubt led people who had fevers, the group of people that most needed to stay the fuck home, to go to the stores and buy some other remedy other than ibuprofen for them. Or at the very least, to send the people they'd been in close contact with out to do the same. The warning ended up exacerbating the problem. Of course, the people who did share the information would probably want to exonerate themselves by pointing out that even mainstream media outlets got fooled by this one. What are we to do? But that's precisely why you shouldn't be sharing medical information on Facebook. Right. Not only are you unqualified to evaluate it, but more often than not, the person reporting on it is unqualified as well. So what medical information should you share on social media? Well, I came up with a handy little mnemonic to help you out in real time. Anytime you're presented with new information about the pandemic and you're trying to decide whether you should put it on Facebook, just remember, no. The N stands for no, and the O stands for, oh my God, what did I just fucking say? Are you a doctor? Are you a professional science communicator specifically tasked with communicating on this subject? Then why the fuck would you think anybody wants to hear what you have to say on this subject anyway? Don't copy and paste the list of advice some fucking buddy said, some fucking doctor said. Don't share the story. Don't post what your friend who's a nurse told you. Just let people who know what they're doing do this shit. You know, if a major media outlet gets a story wrong, at least they can retract it. You know, that's imperfect, but odds are at least fair that like people who usually get their news from source X will see both the original story and the retraction. But if people are just getting their news from what they see on Facebook, how the fuck does one retract something? Sure, you can post a correction, but there's no reason to believe that all the people who saw and or shared your first post will see and or share the next one. And look, I'm not telling you not to share the information that you hear. I'm asking you not to share it on social fucking media. By all means, if you read that such and such a drug is bad for COVID-19 patients from, from a legitimate source, Call your mom, let her know, right? Because you can call her later and tell her never mind if and when you get better data. Social media doesn't work like that. And given the potential risk of adding to the din of bad advice and misinformation, you have to ask yourself what possible benefit can come from this. Even if you're right, you're just reinforcing the idea that Facebook is a good place to go for news. By all means, keep yourself informed. Push back against the incorrect stuff that you see on social media. Share resources with people. But in an unfolding crisis, all the information is going to be tentative. Every correlation is going to be overreported. Every promising result is going to turn into a miracle cure. There's nothing you can do to stop it from happening. But you can stop yourself from doing it.
There has never been a better time to leave the medical profession to the medical professionals.